The concept of right brain versus left brain functions comes from studies on brain lateralization, where each hemisphere of the brain is associated with different types of tasks. While both sides of the brain work together and complement each other, they each have particular strengths. Here are the general differences between right brain and left brain functions. One, analytical versus creative thinking. Left brain, associated with logical, analytical, and detail-oriented thinking. It is typically responsible for reasoning, problem solving, and numerical skills. Right brain, linked to creative and holistic thinking. It's more involved in recognizing patterns, emotional processing, and appreciating art, music, and spatial awareness. Haber two, language and communication. Left brain, dominant in language skills, including grammar, vocabulary, reading, and writing. It plays a primary role in processing speech and understanding syntax. Right brain, more involved in understanding tone, context, and nonverbal cues. It helps interpret emotions, body language, and the big picture in communication. Three, details versus whole picture. Left brain tends to focus on individual details and sequences, breaking down information into smaller components to understand it step by step. Right brain looks at things more holistically, understanding overall patterns and relationships rather than getting caught up in specifics. Four, logical versus intuitive thinking. Left brain thinks in a linear, logical, and sequential way, ideal for tasks like solving math problems or following instructions. Right brain, more intuitive and spontaneous, often generating ideas and connections in a more abstract way. Emotion and empathy. Left brain processes emotions more objectively and is generally less involved in empathy and social connection. Right brain, highly engaged in processing emotions, empathy, and interpersonal relationships. It helps interpret and respond to others' emotions more naturally. Six, spatial awareness and visual skills. Left brain, typically not as strong in spatial perception, though it can handle spatial tasks in a detailed, methodical way. Right brain, strongly linked to visual and spatial skills, such as recognizing faces, interpreting maps, or understanding spatial relationships. Seven, mathematics versus visual arts. Left brain, excel in tasks requiring structure and formulaic reasoning, such as math equations, lists, and organization. Right brain, prefers tasks that involve visual arts, music, and freeform creativity, where there is more flexibility and freedom to experiment. Eight, memory and recall. Left brain, tends to handle verbal memory, such as remembering words, names, and factual details. Right brain, manages visual memory and the recall of spatial or sensory information, such as remembering faces, images, or environments. Summary. The left brain is often associated with logic, analytical thinking, and precision, while the right brain is more connected with creativity, intuition, and empathy. However, most tasks require collaboration between both hemispheres, making the brain a highly integrated system. Research shows that while men's and women's brains are structurally and functionally very similar, there are some general differences in connectivity, processing, and hormone influence that can lead to distinct patterns in thinking, emotional processing, and response to stimuli. Here are a few of the key differences commonly observed. One, connectivity and brain structure. Women, Studies have found that women tend to have greater cross-hemispheric connectivity, meaning that the left and right hemispheres communicate more effectively. This connection may support multitasking, language skills, and social processing. Men, men generally show stronger connections within each hemisphere, which can support more focused, task-oriented processing. This structure may lead to stronger specialization in certain tasks, particularly spatial and mechanical reasoning. Two emotional processing and empathy. Women, women tend to process emotions more actively, likely influenced by the size and activity of certain areas like the amygdala, which is linked to emotional response, and the hippocampus, associated with memory and emotional recall. This connectivity may make women more adept at interpreting emotions and showing empathy. Men's brains often show a less intense response to emotional stimuli which can result in a more compartmentalized approach to emotions. While men are also empathetic, they may be more likely to approach emotional situations with problem solving rather than empathy-focused responses. Three, 
language, and communication. Women, generally, women show higher activity in regions related to language and verbal processing, which may contribute to stronger verbal fluency, language skills, and the ability to articulate emotions and experiences. Men, men may use fewer words to express themselves and may rely more on visual spatial thinking. They may approach communication with an emphasis on information and solutions rather than emotional expression. Four, spatial skills and navigation. Women, women may navigate more by landmarks and familiar cues. This approach is likely linked to their use of the parietal lobe for spatial processing, which enables a memory-driven method of spatial awareness. Men, men are often stronger in spatial rotation tasks, like visualizing objects from different angles. Men may navigate more by mental maps, relying on spatial orientation and direction. Five, stress response. Women, women's brains are more sensitive to oxytocin, a hormone linked to bonding and stress relief. In stressful situations, they may respond by seeking social connection or nurturing, a response sometimes called tend and befriend. Men, men often experience a more intense response from adrenaline and cortisol under stress, leading to a fight or flight reaction. Men may cope with stress through solitary activities or physical outlets. Six, memory and recall. Women, women often outperform men in recalling emotional experiences, details, and sensory memories. This may be due to a larger hippocampus and stronger connections between emotion and memory centers. Men, men are often more detail-oriented about factual recall and spatial memories. This difference can make men more efficient at remembering and analyzing specific information without an emotional context. Seven, problem solving and decision making. Women, women may consider a wider array of perspectives and emotions when making decisions, which can lead to a more collaborative or consensus seeking approach. This approach may involve a combination of intuition and logical assessment. Men, men may prefer a more linear action oriented approach focusing on efficiency and outcomes. This approach can lead to quicker, more decisive responses to problems, especially when immediate action is needed. Summary. While these patterns exist, they are generalizations. Individual brain differences are often subtle, and many people display characteristics traditionally associated with both genders. Environmental influences, personal experiences, and individual personalities shape brain functions in just as much, if not more, than biological differences. The brain undergoes significant development and transformation from childhood to adulthood. This process involves structural growth, the pruning of unused connections, and the maturation of areas that affect cognition, emotion, and behavior. Here's an overview of the key changes. One. Growth of brain cells and synaptic density. Childhood. During early childhood, the brain undergoes a rapid increase in synapses, connections between neurons, in a process called synaptogenesis. This phase allows the brain to form numerous connections and adapt to various learning experiences. Adolescence to adulthood. In adolescence, the brain begins pruning synapses, eliminating weaker or unused connections. This pruning makes the brain more efficient solidifying pathways that are regularly used and needed for daily life. Haber two, myelination, childhood, myelination, the development of a fatty sheath around nerve fibers begins early but continues to develop. Myelination allows for faster, more efficient communication between brain cells, improving cognitive and motor skills. Adulthood, by adulthood, most major pathways are fully myelinated, allowing for quicker and more coordinated brain function. Full myelination, especially in the prefrontal cortex, enhances complex thinking, decision-making, and emotional regulation. Three, prefrontal cortex maturation. The prefrontal cortex, responsible for higher order functions like decision-making, planning, and impulse control, is still developing in children, which is why they often struggle with impulsivity and risk assessment. Adolescence. The prefrontal cortex undergoes significant development in adolescence, but it doesn't fully mature until the mid-20s. This gradual growth helps adolescents start managing complex emotions, abstract thinking, and long-term planning. In adulthood, a fully matured prefrontal cortex supports rational thinking, improved emotional control, and long-term goal setting. Chapter 4, Emotional Regulation and Limbic System Development, Childhood, 
children's brains are highly influenced by the limbic system, particularly the amygdala, which is involved in emotional responses. This leads to heightened emotional reactions, as the prefrontal cortex isn't yet fully developed to moderate these emotions. Adolescence. Adolescents experience heightened emotional responses as the limbic system matures, often making them more reactive and sensitive to social influences and peer pressure. Adulthood. In adulthood, with a fully developed prefrontal cortex, individuals gain greater control over their emotions and responses, leading to more balanced and thoughtful interactions. Five, improvement in cognitive abilities, childhood. Young children have more concrete thinking abilities, focusing on the here and now. Their ability to understand abstract concepts is limited and improves gradually. Adolescence. Adolescents begin developing abstract thinking, critical reasoning, and hypothetical problem solving. They also gain skills in self-reflection and understanding perspectives. Adulthood. In adulthood, cognitive abilities continue to stabilize and improve, allowing for complex decision-making, advanced problem solving, and the application of life experiences in decision-making. Six, social and identity development, childhood. Children's social understanding is still developing with a focus on family and immediate caregivers. Identity is closely tied to family and basic social interactions. Adolescents, adolescents start forming their identity seeking independence, and exploring social roles. Peer relationships become central as they begin to develop a more complex sense of self. Adulthood. Adults typically have a stronger, more stable sense of identity and self-concept. They're more likely to have defined values and beliefs shaped by personal experiences and social contexts. Seven, learning and memory. Childhood. Children's brains are highly plastic, meaning they adapt and change quickly in response to new information. This plasticity allows rapid learning, but may lead to less stable long-term memory. Adolescents. Adolescents continue to have high brain plasticity, though it gradually reduces as they age. They become better at retaining long-term information and developing complex memories. Adulthood. Adults have a more stable memory system, though brain plasticity is lower than in childhood. The brain becomes less flexible, but is more efficient at storing complex, meaningful memories. Summary. The transition from childhood to adulthood involves refining the brain's structure, efficiency, and function. Early years are marked by rapid growth and adaptability, while adolescence brings pruning and specialization. By adulthood, the brain becomes more efficient and stabilized, supporting complex cognition, emotional regulation, and a well-developed sense of self.